to be honest, I don't think I've seen a, a relationship between a coach and an athlete which <laughs> comes across as so blatantly obvious being so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's not always fun. I've, we, I think we both have a good sense of humor and there's certainly times when Jazz gets really tired, doesn't want to do what I tell her to do. And sometimes I'm tired because I get up early in the morning and I don't want to hear her complain. But for the most part, away from those moments, yeah, we get along well. Yeah, definitely. I think we always have a lot of banter on poolside and uh, it's always a great atmosphere to be around. Did you strike it off immediately or is this slow and developing? Are two similar personalities or <laughs> I can't remember. It's been two and a half years. Yeah, um, yeah I, right away, you know, I just picked up on her personality and could tell that we could joke around and, and have fun. And then once I, I realized the swimmer has that type of attitude, then I usually take it and make jokes with them and have fun. Got to have fun. We spend a lot of time together, not just her and I, but um, all the swimmers. Four hours a day, six days a week, adds up a lot of time. Don't expect it. as an athlete, first of all, put them down amount of time, but I don't think you could do it unless it was fun. Yeah, I know, I think you've got to enjoy it, and uh, also having like a good coach and a good group around you makes it makes it better to be around. And I think it's always hard like to find the right coach that suits you and that you can get on well with, and like I found that in Bird and a couple of my other coaches that I've had as well, so it's, it's not always that you can find a coach you get on with so well. When he's strict, how strict is he then? <laughs> He's, he's not always uh, strict. <laughs> Sometimes he has his days where uh, he wants you to do like the set up thing, and uh, but then other days, most of the time, he's uh, full of laughs and fun. <laughs> when she's good, when she's good, how good is she? What do you mean? When she performs to her highest level, how much pleasure do you get out of <clears throat> your input into that? Um, I don't even would say it's so much my input. I mean, I, I think I facilitate what she's doing, but I, I take great pleasure watching swimmers go fast, right, uh, doing their best. And if I, like I said, if I have any part to, to doing that at all to help them, that, that's great. But just to see them succeed because <clears throat> they put a lot of time and effort into what they do. And I know, on the other hand, they get extremely disappointed when they don't perform a best time. What does he think your strengths are? Hmm. <laughs> um, my strengths, uh, I'd say the ability to race. Like I'm always up for a race, always like really competitive and I always want to win. Um, I think my determination as well and motivation, I'd say. <laughs> exactly. Spot on, <laughs> as you would say. <clears throat> Very tough competitor. If she's in a close race, I'll bet on her to win nine out of ten times against anyone in the world <laughs> right and she's not intimidated she handles pressure very well right the bigger the beat the faster she goes and that's the way you have to do it because <clears throat> a lot of people get to the bigger meet and they just fall apart including world record holders it's easier to hold a world record than it is to win a medal at a big meet because there you're racing the time doesn't matter and that's where the pressure is and she comes through at those meets she has so far, and that's her personality type. <laughs> what do you reckon, what does he think your biggest weakness is? Um, <laughs> my starts and my turns and my power and my legs. It's never been like a big strength of mine, but I've been trying to work on it in training and uh, we do practice it a lot, so hopefully that will improve. For anyone who wants to get into coaching, swimming coaching in particular, and and get that buzz and get that pleasure and success of gradual achievement out of it. What was the route into coaching and establishing this sort of relationship with a group of swimmers or a particular swimmer? Well, I think most coaches, myself included, started out um, teaching lessons to younger swimmers, eight and under, six and under. And so to me, you have to enjoy working with children. And then I kept coaching and then you start working with older swimmers and sooner or later you have to split. You can't really keep doing both because it takes too much time. And so then I've moved into the more elite 
international level uh, of coaching. And same thing, you have to love the sport. I mean, I think about swimming and coaching more than I should, really, because you know, someone will ask me a question, I'll be off thinking about what sets we're going to do in practice next week. It becomes all-consuming. It's your passion. It's what you want to succeed at. It's not something you just do as a hobby. If you're going to go to Commonwealth Games, I always tell my swimmers, we're not going to swim and not make finals. You're going to make finals. And once you're in the finals, you're going to win a medal. And if you're in the medals, you better have a shot at winning, right? So you're going to go there to do your best and, and be successful. So you have to have, to me, you have to have all those things. You love the sport. You love working with children. Or, I mean, they're still, they're not children, but they're still young adults. The campaign is called, actually, Behind Every Star. <clears throat> but I guess that suggests that you're the star. And you're pushing. Is that always the role of a coach pushing or pulling, metaphorically, you know? <clears throat> well, it depends on the swimmer. Some swimmers actually, I mean, not jazz so much, but there's another one in our group. I have to hold them back because they just go too hard all the time. Right? And she knows who I'm talking about right now. Right? The girl just won't miss a practice, always goes on the fastest set and the hardest interval and whatever the hardest thing is. You can't do that. It's too hard mentally. It's too hard physically. And I've got to hold her back. Jazz has got a pretty good balance, and, and swimmers at this level, usually they know how their body feels, and they, know, they can tell me when they need to rest and when they're ready to go fast. And if they're not ready to go fast, I mean, I trust them. And we're not dealing with a 14-year-old swimmer that doesn't really want to be here, but mom wants them to swim. Their parents aren't here. They're here because they want to be here. So when she comes in and says, I can't swim fast today because I'm tired or I didn't sleep, I believe her, and we go easy, or she goes home. So it's got to be a, a lot of give and take, and understanding of what really is going on. That trust and that understanding almost is, is vital, Yeah, definitely. I think you've got to put all your kind of respect into your coach and belief into your coach, because otherwise you're not going to really swim well. You need to believe that what they're doing is going to help you a lot. And obviously when I moved away from home at 16 without my parents, I moved into a swimmer's house, so come into a stable swimming environment was like vital for me and it's really fitting in well and I'm really enjoying it. Two last questions. Do you ever argue? If you do, we walk. <laughs> <laughs> Not really anything serious. We argued much more as joking with each other. <laughs> Sometimes it, to, the only thing it could possibly be is kicking. She doesn't like to kick. And I know it's a weakness, so every once in a while I make her kick. And then sometimes we'll argue about how fast she's going because I always want her to go a little bit faster and push the envelope a little bit more. And it's hard for her, I know it is. But we both know that's the weakness, the weakest part of her race is her kick. And if she can improve it that much, you know, that's going to get her hopefully to the next level. Um, obviously, London 2012 is the main aim because that's where it's all going to be, it's going to be in the home country and to be around everyone and the team spirit is going to be amazing and the atmosphere is just going to be absolutely incredible so that's my main aim and you don't want to kind of, as Bud says, you don't want to just go to a competition and just aim to swim well, or like aim to just swim, you want to go there and you want to aim for the medals and aim for the top so I think that's definitely what I'm aiming for and obviously Bud is going to have a big part in in that and I've put it in I've put the balls in his court and obviously I trust him and what he's do, what he's doing and I've just got to keep working hard and keep him keep improving. That is um that's the big responsibility. <clears throat> I'm competitive. Jazz is competitive, right? I, I wanna race, I wanna see how fast she can go. I've set goals for her, I've told her some of them um, in what times I think she needs to do to win a medal in twenty twelve to make the team. Right now she's got two of the fastest 400 freestylers in the world, two of the top three fastest ranked ahead of her. But there's other events she can swim and make, and you never know what's going to happen in two and a half years, whether they'll, they'll be going as fast. So you know, we'll find a way to get her there, get her on the Olympic team, and come home with a medal.